Rails 7 is out, and the last time I've covered active storage was in Rails 5.2. Today we're going to be taking a look at what's changed and how to use active storage for image uploads in Rails 7. There's two current options that you can use. The previous one from Rails 5 used Image Magic. Today we're going to be taking a look at using Mini Magic as well as using VIPs to accomplish the resizing of images. If these tutorials are interesting to you, I'm planning on doing a few more, probably on a weekly basis, so consider subscribing so you are alerted when those release. Now, in terms of the different options, we need to first create our basic application. I'm gonna stop the server, and then I'm gonna full screen and run a Rails G scaffold. I'll call it a pin, and I'll give it a title type text by default. You then want to run a rails active underscore storage colon install command to generate our migrations. We can then do a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. I'm also going to do an action text install. So I'm going to say rails g action underscore text colon install. And that's just so we can take a look at the action text. One thing to check is it does tell you to make sure image processing is in your gem file. I'm now going to run another rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database again, and then I'll exit out of the full screen. I'm going to run a rails s command to start the server. Let's come over to our explorer and let's come down to our gem file around line 50 we should see the image processing gem. You're gonna to want to uncomment this if you're using active storage variants. Now, alternatively, you do have access to VIPs. Image processing, if we check inside of our gem lock, is gonna have the mini magic gem and the ruby vips gem. If you wanna switch away from vips, which is your default, over to image magic, you're gonna to wanna to come over to your config file, environments development.rb, and then you wanna add in a config.active underscore storage variant processor and set it equal to mini underscore magic. By default, I think it's set to vips. This would allow you to switch. One thing to note, we have to stop our server here. If you're using mini magic, you're gonna to need to do a sudo apt install image magic, I think. If you're using vips, you're gonna to have to do a sudo apt install lib vips. In my case, apparently I already had it installed. Let's now run a Rails S to start the server again. Those two are gonna allow you to resize the images, which we'll take a look at in a second. Let's now create the ability to upload these images. We're gonna start at the model. We'll come into the pin.rb. Now we're gonna give each pin two different options. First, we're gonna say it has underscore one underscore attached, and it's gonna have an attached image. If you wanna do more than one image, let's say has many attached pictures. If you wanna do a rich text area from action text that allows you to upload your images into your blog post or whatever, you wanna say has rich text. And then we'll call that the body of the post. We'll hit control S to save that. Let's come over to our explorer controllers and our pins controller. We wanna scroll down to the bottom where we have the pin params. I'm gonna full screen this. After our title, we need to whitelist our body for the action text. We then need to whitelist our image because we have one image. In the case of our pictures, we actually can't just do colon pictures. Instead, we need to do pictures, colon, and then an empty array because we're expecting zero or more pictures. Now that that's done, our model and our controllers are complete. Let's come over to our views, pins, and the pin form. Below the title, I'm gonna do a div, and I'm gonna give this the body of the post. I'm gonna say form.rich underscore text underscore area colon body. Below that, I'm gonna create a div. This is gonna be for our image. I'm gonna say form.label for the image, and then form.file underscore field for the image. Below that, we need another div, and this is gonna be for our pictures. In this case, I'm gonna say form.label pictures, form.file underscore field pictures, comma, multiple, colon, true. That's how we give this one the ability to accept more than one picture. I'm then gonna come over to the pin. This is the partial. Below the title, I'm gonna create the pin.body. 
below that, I'm gonna do something like a BR just to be safe. And then we'll do the pin.image. Below that, we'll do pin.pictures.each do picture. And then we'll do the picture. I've done this deliberately in a way where it won't work. And that's just so we can take a look at what's happening. Also gonna do an HR between the pin image and the pin pictures. I'm gonna come over to here. Actually, I forgot. Let's come into our config real quick. Let's go over to our routes. Root should be the pins controller index action. Now I'm gonna refresh the page. I'm gonna click new pin. Hello world, words go here. And I'll bold the go part. I'm gonna click attach and I'm gonna attach a random picture. I'll click the sunset picture. That alone should work for our action text. For our image itself, this is where we gave the ability to upload one image. I'm gonna click this random dude. And for the pictures, I'm gonna just select, I don't know, this one and this one. So you can see here I'm using control to select multiple images. You can also use shift. I'll click open. And you can see the difference here. This one just has the file name. This one just says two files. I'm gonna click create pin. After I create the pin, you'll notice that we have some issues here. First one is this one takes forever to load. That's expected because of how I'm running this. But we also have just these appearing at the bottom. If I come over to our partial, let me get rid of this equal sign so it's a bit more clear. We have our picture up here, or our image up here, and we have each picture down here. If we wanna make these visible, we actually need to wrap these in an image underscore tag. If I do that and I save, you'll now see our uh, image, our singular image is visible and our multiples are down here. If we wanna make this image a link to the image itself, so we can open it in a new tab, we can change this to a link underscore to the image tag comma pin dot image. We'll save this and now if I click on it, it'll take me to this page. That's fine. What about the pictures? Same deal. We can take this, paste it down here, and change this from pin.image to picture. We then want to change this from pin.image to picture as well. Refresh, and now we have all of these images. We have two options to style these. The first is to do it with CSS. So we can say comma, style, and then do a width of 150 px and a height of 150 px. We can then come over here and copy this and paste it down here inside of the image tag. I'll hit Control S to save it, refresh, and now everything's being resized. This of course isn't ideal because on the surface it looks fine. Below the surface, these images are still these full-sized images. They're just being forced with CSS, which means it's more for me, the user, to load. That's not ideal. If you wanna do the same thing with the action text, you have to come over to the explorer, the active storage and the blob.html. And then in here, you have an image tag for the blob.representation, resize to limit, in gallery, blah, 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 blah. You wanna change some of these sizes to force your action text to be resized. This is also why the action text breaks if you don't have image processing set up because of this resize to limit call. It's trying to resize the image, which it can't do without the underlying libraries of image, of image magic or VIPs to do the resizing. But okay, how do we do this resizing ourselves? Inside of our pin partial, we have this image tag. Let's get rid of this style and let's change this from pin.image to pin.image underscore as underscore thumbnail. I like to do this because I like to think of these thumbnails as the equivalent of a YouTube thumbnail. So we'll come over to the pin.rb, we'll come down, def image as thumbnail, and then we'll say image.variant resize underscore two underscore limit colon 300 comma 300 dot processed. And then I'll hit control S, come over here, refresh the page, scroll down, and now this one's being resized appropriately. If I click on the image, it still takes me to the full-sized image though. So that's good. That's what you want. That's that's good UX. Now, if we come over to our underscore pin.html and we grab this same one and we try to do it on the picture, of course, it's not going to work. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Because we're doing pin.pictures.each. 
This is trying to call the method on the picture, but we have the method on the pin model. So that's not gonna work. Instead, we can do pin.pictures underscore as underscore thumbnails, and we can get rid of this pictures. We then need this pictures as thumbnails to return something. So let's come over to our pin.rb, def pictures as thumbnails, and then inside of this, as GitHub Copilot is suggesting, we can do a resize. I'm gonna change this to 150 by 150. What we're doing is for each picture, we are mapping it to the picture.variant, resize to limit, and calling processed on it. This will then return all of these pictures. We can save this, come over here, refresh, scroll down, and these have now been resized. They look a little bit strange, of course. So one thing you wanna watch out for, let me close out of these. If we come into our pin partial, we still have this forced resize right here for the style. So let's get rid of that and just put in the picture, refresh the page, and now they're allowed to resize outside of the forced 150 by 150, so they also look a little bit better. In this case, these have all been resized to the actual image here. So by doing this map, we have now linked to a permanent image that has been resized to this very, very small image. If you wanted your other image to link to the same thing, you could change this to link to the pin.image underscore as underscore thumbnail in the same way. Refresh click on it, it's now the resized image. You can see here the reason why that's happening is because we're calling the method outside here and we're iterating on each of these returned pictures. Over here, although we're doing the image tag on the pin.image's thumbnail, by leaving this as the image, our link doesn't change here. If you wanted to change how this works, you would have to change it to iterate through each of the pictures and then grab that picture as an image thumbnail. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at how that would work. I'm gonna change this to say pin.pictures.each. And then inside of here, we do a link to image. And instead, what I wanna do is just call, because I'm gonna be using the pin model for this, I'm gonna say pin.picture as thumbnail, and I'm gonna pass in the picture. I'm then going to link to the picture itself. I now need to grab this and create this method in here. I'm gonna say def picture as thumbnail, which takes in a pick. We then want to do a pick.variant resize to limit. And I'll change this to, I don't know, 200 by 200, just to make it a different size. So you can see that it's working. Now, if we refresh, undefined method picture as thumbnail. It actually shouldn't be a capital P pin. And now if we scroll down, you can see that these have been resized and I'm assuming this is gonna be close to 200 in one of these directions. In this case, you can see right there, IMG 200 by 112. If I click on this, it now takes me to the full screened image. So that's two different ways that you can handle linking to all of these images. And hopefully that covers all of those questions. The only other thing I would say is if you come back here and you create a new post, test and you don't attach anything, it's gonna to try to call the variant on the image as thumbnail because it's looping through all of these, which it's empty, which means it doesn't loop at all. But in this case, there's no protection here. Protect, you can just do if pin.image.attached question mark. Hit control S and save it. Now, if I come back to the pins and I click on show this pin for the last one, it works just fine. The other thing you wanna check in your pin.rb for uh, however you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you are working with the right content types. Let's say you only want to resize two different content types. Let's come into here, show this pin. I guess it works on the homepage as well. What you can do is a guard clause that says return unless the image is in the content type. And then for the content type, you're checking image slash JPEG, image slash PNG. If you were to try to upload a video here, back to pins, new pin, test, choose file, I'll come over to videos, I'll come over to videos, and I'll grab, I don't know, this intro video, create pin. In this case, it doesn't work because this is throwing an error as well. But if this wasn't 
checking or if this was checking for it so i'll come up here and i'll do another check i'll say if pin dot image dot content underscore type dot in question mark i'm actually just going to copy this entire section right here i'll paste it in i'll full screen it if pin dot image dot content type dot in these save back to pins and scroll down to whatever I just uploaded, show this pin. It no longer blows up in the view or in the actual method itself up here. Okay, so that covered a lot. Everything from resizing to validating to doing multiple images. If you're interested in a more advanced tutorial for active storage, I have a video on the channel where I implemented active storage in a chat room with image previews. It allowed for everything from uploading podcasts to videos to Word documents to images, etc., inside of a real-time chat app using Turbo. If you're interested in that video, I will have a link to it on the screen right now.